Hello, my lovelies. This is the first of what I hope will become an ongoing series of folklore and ghost stories. Today, I will tell you the story of an unknown boy and Cookie Bridge. Before I get into all of that, I want to welcome all of my viewers and subscribers to Cape Bonnie Country. Thank you so much for stopping by. This is Cookie Bridge. It looks like an ordinary bridge on an ordinary country road, but something mysterious happens here. Growing up, local teenagers would tell the tale of a ghostly boy seen on the side of the road on rainy nights. A passing car would see a figure on the side of the road and stop to give the boy a ride. He would get in the back seat, never say a word, and then disappear before the car reached the other side of the bridge, leaving only a wet spot on the seat where he had sat seconds before. No matter how hard you tried to keep your eye on the boy in the rearview mirror, you would divert your eyes for a split second and he would vanish. On other nights, when it wasn't raining, you could try to catch this boy another way, and this is how it became known as Cookie Bridge. On the night of the new moon, the darkest night of the month, you have to arrive at the eastern end of the bridge at 11.23 p.m. If you arrive too soon or too late, it will not work. So you have to approach the bridge, stop 500 feet away, and wait for the clock to turn to 11.23 before driving the final feet. You park on the right side of the road immediately in front of the start of the guardrail. Immediately, you place one cookie on the dashboard and hide the second cookie somewhere else in the car. Then, you get out, lock the door, and start walking across the bridge. You walk all the way to the other end without looking back over your shoulder for any reason. Once at the other end, look at your watch. If you reach the other end before 11.28, you have to stand with your back towards your car until 11.28. Do not look back for any reason. If it is after 11.28, turn around and go back to your car. If you do everything correctly, the car will still be locked, but both cookies will be gone. Naturally, as a teenager growing up near here, I had to try it out for myself. Unfortunately, I was never able to make it all the way across the bridge without looking back. I would hear something behind me and turn around every single time. I could neither prove nor disprove this story. I also never saw the boy by the road when I drove across the bridge on rainy nights. Sometimes I would feel like someone or something was watching me from the woods but I never saw him. I heard stories from adults, people I knew and trusted, where they all swore they picked up a rain-soaked hitchhiker at the east end of the bridge, and he disappeared before they got to the west end. It wasn't just one person or two people. It was dozens of people living in and around the area that have had this experience. I'm not going to use the actual names of the people or places involved in this story. It is not my place to disclose them to the world. Their names have been altered to protect their privacy. The Cookie Bridge of today is not the same bridge that existed in 1961. The 1961 bridge was slightly north of the current bridge's location and constructed with concrete stanchions and steel frame. But the road itself was not paved. It was a series of wooden slats spanning the steel frame and wooden guardrails. In March of 1961, Mr. Oakman finished his business in a town about 20 miles away and headed home in his pickup truck. It was around 7 p.m., just past dark, and it had started to rain. 
In the distance, he saw a boy with his collar turned up to the wind, trudging along the side of the highway carrying a suitcase. Mr. Oakman pulled up alongside him and offered him a ride, telling him to hop in the back, as he had a piece of machinery in the passenger seat. The boy jumped up in the bed of the pickup and used part of a tarp to protect himself from the wind and rain. Mr. Oakman continued down the highway and turned onto the side road to take him towards the small town he lived in. The rain was coming down in buckets by now, and as the truck crossed the bridge, it hydroplaned and crashed through the wooden guardrail. Mr. Oakman survived the crash, but the hitchhiker was thrown from the truck into the river below. His body was recovered downstream a few days later. Mr. Oakman had never gotten the boy's name, and so the community raised money to give the boy, who looked to be around 15 or 16 years old, a proper burial. And they erected a headstone that read, Unknown Boy. The bridge was demolished in 1964 and replaced with the bridge you see today. Mr. Oakman told me this story himself around 1987. He told me and anyone else that would listen. He believed with his whole heart that the boy could not rest because he died with no name. When the boy's suitcase was found, the only item that gave them any clue where he might be from was a single pack of cigarettes with a North Carolina state stamp on it. He chased down every clue he could for the rest of his life, desperately trying to figure out who this boy was. When Mr. Oakman passed, his son took up the search. In 2016, Mr. Oakman's son had become a local political leader. He was able to work with different authorities and groups, such as the Center for Missing and Exploited Children, to exhume the boy's body for the purpose of extracting DNA in order to identify him. The body was respectfully reinterred, and the community waited. Unfortunately, the results of the DNA testing did not lead to a positive identity. The boy continued to be nameless, the sightings of the boy in the rain continued. The teenagers still left cookies on their dashboards, and life in the community continued on. The DNA samples sat preserved and labeled in the university laboratory. In 2020, Mr. Oakman's son was contacted by a different group that was pioneering new techniques in forensic genealogy. They had come across the case and wanted to exhume the body again to obtain new DNA samples. However, the local judge would not allow the body to be disturbed again until and unless the existing samples did not yield results. The existing samples were tracked down and subjected to a new process. The DNA results were fed into a new database that had been cross-referenced with genealogy databases. You know, like 23andMe. The process took over a year. However, the local news reported in November of 2021 that the DNA genealogy revealed potential family members. In December of 2021, it was known that the boy had a surviving brother in Florida and that the boy's name was Danny. Now, this is the point where you will either believe me or think I am totally insane. I was at my mother's house on Christmas Eve when she told me that the boy has a name. I'd never seen him on the road. The cookies I left had never gone missing. All I had ever experienced was an occasional feeling that something was watching me from the woods. When I left her house on Christmas Eve 2021, it was raining. And I have to drive across Cookie Bridge from east to west to get to my home. I was listening to my Christmas playlist as I turned onto the road that contains Cookie Bridge. Suddenly, Weird Al Yankovic's Christmas at Ground Zero stopped playing and the Dubliner's version of Oh Danny Boy came on. 
Oh, Danny Boy is not on my Christmas playlist. Not wanting to take my attention from the road, I began singing along. As Cookie Bridge came into view, I saw a figure standing at the end of the guardrail in the rain. I stopped and saw the face of a 15 or 16 year old boy. I rolled down the window and I kept singing. The song came to an end and I simply said, you're free now, Danny. The pipes are calling. He did not get in my car. I did not try to take him across the river. He just faded away into the mist. It was the first and last time I saw him. The community raised money to get him a new headstone with his proper name on it. And his younger brother, who was 77 at the time, traveled up from Florida to visit his grave. I like to think that Danny was able to move on once we knew his name and that he wasn't forsaken. If you enjoyed this story, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, leave a comment, especially if you like to hear more country ghost stories and folklore, and share this video with your friends and family. This channel is not possible without your support. So thank you so much for stopping by. I will see you next time.